Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on the latest marvel of electric vehicle engineering from GM, the 2013 Chevrolet Volt. The Volt is loaded with new technology, including features like an LCD dashboard, high-tech drivetrain computers, regenerative braking, and more. Huge thanks to GM for letting me drive it around for a week. So, without further ado, let's check it out and look at the awesome features on the 2013 Chevrolet Volt. The Volt is an extended range vehicle from GM. There's absolutely no combustion engine under the hood. The car is completely powered by an electric drivetrain, which is powered by a battery. Now the battery runs from this center console here back through the car to behind the back seats in a T formation. Now GM states that the battery holds 16 kilowatt hours of power and will charge on a 120 volt normal household outlet in eight to 10 hours. That battery will then deliver you what is supposed to be 38 miles to a charge. Now I know what you're thinking, 61 kilometers, 38 miles, it's not really that far. Like, you're gonna have trips that are longer than 61 kilometers. The reason why this isn't a hybrid and it's classified as an extended range vehicle uh, is because there is also a gas tank in this uh, vehicle and when the battery is depleted, a small generator under the hood kicks in and uses a minute amount of gas to keep the electric drivetrain running. Now after driving an electric car for the first time, I have to say it was way different. I mean, you have to kind of grasp the concept that there's no engine RPMs. Everything delivered in this car is electronic torque from the battery. When I first started driving it, it was really weird because I got and I stepped on the accelerator and I was waiting for this big vroom from the engine, but you, you, there's no engine. It's just a battery. The car is so silent when it's on battery mode. You literally could hear a dime drop. Now, like I said before, GM says that this car will get 38 miles per battery charge, but you have to understand that that is perfect 38 miles in perfect weather conditions, perfect, uh, you know, flat land. So I've been using this car in temperatures anywhere from minus 10 to like 10 degrees Celsius. Um, and I've been getting about 31 miles, which is like 51 uh, to 53 kilometers on each battery charge. Now charging this at home, I was using the 120 volt charger that comes standard with the vehicle in the back. And using that charger, GM states that you should charge in about eight to 10 hours. Now, I was actually getting a charge in 17 to 18 hours. Apparently the 2013 volt defaults to a slower charging cycle, so it doesn't overload your circuits. Quick change in features in the, uh, in the center console here. Uh, and I was getting the charge in like eight to 10 hours. So I mean, very cool uh, that it actually does charge in that time and GM's not just pulling your chain, but really strange that it doesn't you know, default to maximum capacity. Now I should also mention that you can get a 240 volt charger at an additional cost. Instead of charging in eight to 10 hours, that will actually charge your battery uh, in as little as four hours. The Volt features four different drive modes. There is normal, which is just normal. There is the mountain mode, the sport mode, and then hold. Now, sport mode is my absolute favorite because when you put it into sport mode, you can really feel the acceleration in this thing kick off. Now, you have to remember that when you do that, you know, it's probably going to kill the battery a little bit quicker, uh, but it's just such an awesome experience. Another feature that the Volt has is regenerative braking. So that means that when you brake or you're applying any sort of kinetic energy to the car, the car then takes that energy and turns it back and recycles it into energy that the battery uses. But just to think that the car is powering itself, just, I mean, it's not a lot of energy, but just that little bit more energy that you can have. The fact that the car is using the kinetic energy that it is creating to then recreate energy for itself is, is just mind blowing. And what's really cool is that you can actually see a power flow chart that comes up here in the energy mode cycle on the uh, seven inch navigation screen here. Before I talk about anything else inside the car, I have to touch on the outside of this car. Personally, I think this car is beautiful. It's so futuristic looking, it's so slick. The headlights look awesome. The chrome grille at the front looks awesome. Uh, just the overall aerodynamics of this car, just it makes you feel like you're driving a Ferrari 458 down the road because so many people are staring at you. Moving on to the interior of the car, the Volt is just as high tech on the inside as it is under the engine. My favorite part of this entire car, you know, battery aside and all, is this LCD dashboard screen that they give you here. This is so cool that they've kind of moved away from the standard physical dials and you know, I can have this customizable display in front of me. Now easily my favorite feature in the screen feature is this little gauge that gives you, that you know, it tells me when I do something stupid to burn energy. Like when I accelerate really hard, there's this ball that's in the middle of this gauge and when I accelerate, the ball goes way up and turns red. When I brake really hard and I'm burning energy like that, the ball goes way down and turns red. But when the ball's in the middle, that means I'm gaining maximum fuel efficiency. Now moving over to my console here, uh, the only physical buttons I have on this console are the energy mode button, drive mode button, 
the power button, my four-way flashers, the unlock and lock buttons, and then the electronic parking brake. Everything else is a touch tone button, uh, minus the volume knobs, which are physical moving knobs. Uh, but everything else is a touch tone button on this like really slick, uh, glossy panel, which they have here. Now, I think you can get, also get this panel in white uh, in different variations and different trims of the car, but I, I can't see having like a white console in my car. Uh, I'd definitely go with the gray. They're getting the consumer used to the fact that someday, hopefully, this will all be just like a big old 17-inch flat panel display like it is in the Tesla model. The infotainment system on board this car is the MyLink system from Chevrolet, which is very similar to the IntelliLink system that we saw in the Buick Verona, which is why I didn't really do a brand new video on it explaining the technology, because it's got a lot of the same features. Easily my favorite feature on the MyLink system, which I forgot to mention on the Verona, the Verona also had it, is the tune select feature with XM, which means that I can kind of configure certain songs. I can set those songs in a My Favorites list on my XM, and uh, what XM will do is scan all of the XM band, every, all 200 of the XM radio stations, it will scan them all and as soon as that artist or that song comes up on XM, a big notification will pop up on my screen here and say, Run to the Hills by Iron Maiden is playing. Do you want to tune in? And then I can click tune in. This car will comfortably seat four people. Uh, there is only two seats in the back because the battery runs from this console to the back, so there's no bench in the back. It's just two seats. There is a console in the back like this that you can put things in. However, uh, like I said, it seats four. I had Jarrett Muir, Greg O'Grady, Ryan Lambert, Corey Robinson, Justin O'Halloran, Walter Lee, and myself in here just to test that out. That's seven people in the Volt. Now, contrary to popular belief, this is not a sedan. It's actually a hatchback, uh, which it makes it even cooler. And room back there in the trunk is limited because you got to imagine that the battery pack back there, the chargers back there, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the back of this car because it's an electric car. Um, but you know, there is still a lot of space in there. Now, one of the most important things in this review, this is an electric car. So it's gonna cost a little bit more money, but that money should pay itself back by saving you a lot of money at the gas tanks. And I can tell you right now, it will. I've had this car for a little over a week. I've put over a thousand kilometers on it. And right now my average fuel economy is 3.6 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers driven. That means that to a tank, I can get 830 kilometers. And to tank a gas in this Volt is $30. Another cool feature of the OnStar app is that like say I'm in my office and my car is down in the parking lot uh, and I wanna go to this new Mexican restaurant for lunch. I can go to the OnStar app on my phone, look up the Mexican restaurant in navigation and then send those directions to my vehicle. All I have to do is step on my vehicle, hit the power button and my turn by turn navigation has begun. I've really enjoyed driving the Volt for the past week. I mean, I have to admit when I originally got it, the electric torque and the, you know, no engine RPMs kind of threw me off and it was like, ah, do I really like this car? Uh, but after the driving it for the past week, I've been driving this everywhere and after driving it, uh, it's just such a cool car and I've gotten used to the electric RPMs now uh, or the no RPMs, I should say. The Volt is a new genre of cars. I mean, it's not a hybrid, it's an extended range vehicle. Whereas there is a mode where this car is completely powered by a battery, no fuel is being used. And I really hope that this technology becomes more widespread uh, and you start to see it in more homes. Before this car sees widespread application, uh, I really think that GM needs to do a couple of things. And the first one being uh, the obvious, and the, I think the battery needs to last longer. I mean, you know, you don't want this to be just a commuter car. You want to bring this car everywhere because it's such a cool car. So I think that uh, the battery range needs to be extended, if not, the 240 volt uh, charger become cheaper because I think it's $3,000 right now and then you get a $1,000 kickback pick, kick from the government. Uh, so you know, you're looking at about two extra $2,000. You know, I, I would love to see either the price of that charger come down or a new more rapid charge technology be implemented in these cars. Uh, because you know, as soon as you come home and the battery's depleted, you wanna be able to just get going right again with the new battery. So guys, this has been Luke from LukeDemarco.com and Dimco Media. Uh, if you have any questions about the 2013 Chevrolet Volt, be sure to leave them down in the comment section down below. I'm literally driving this car back to give it to GM right now. That's how long I waited to do this review because I wanted to get the most out of this car. But thank you so much for watching my review. Like I said, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you like this video, be sure to like the video down below. It really helps us out. So without further ado, before I crash this car on the 401, my name is Luke DeMarco and I'll see you in the next video.